So today we discuss a very basic and fundamental concept in biotechnology, and this is basically the concept of complement and reverse complement. So first, let us have a look at uh, the basic ideas here, and then we move on to the practical demonstration for this. So here I represent one strand of DNA, and you know that DNA has a orientation so it has a five prime end marked by a phosphate group, and you have a three prime end marked by an OH group, right? So this is the orientation here. The blunt end represents the five prime end, and the arrowhead represents the three prime end. And in this DNA, you are marking your nucleotide. So this is a position one. This is a position 1000. And in between, you're looking at a nucleotide uh, sequence of 10 bases, 501 to 510, right? Now, most databases only have this uh, one strand sequence that is known as a plus a strand. And the idea is that uh, you don't really need to store the minus strand sequence because the minus strand sequence or the complementary strand sequence can be derived directly from the plus a strand sequence following the base complementarity rule. So if there is an A here, there will be a T here. There is a T here, there will be an A here. For G, it will be C, and for C, it will be G, right? So you know these basic rules of base complementarity that allows you to derive the uh, sequence for the minus strand, right? So the plus strand sequence is present in the database, and the minus strand sequence can be derived following the base complementarity rule, right? So let me now draw the second strand for you, and you know that second strand will be anti parallel to the first one, so it will have opposite orientation. This has a three prime end here, it will have the five prime end here, and the three prime end at the opposite end here. And the sequence of the minus strand can be directly derived from the sequence of the plus strand following the base complementarity rule. So here you have an adenine, you have a thymine here, for thymine you have an adenine. For guanine, you'll have a cytosine, and for cytosine, you'll have a guanine. Another important thing that you'll notice is that the minus strand is anti-parallel to the plus strand, and therefore, the orientation of the sequence actually changes. So now let's have a look at the key points that we've discussed till now. So first, of course, if your DNA is double-stranded or it has two strands. Uh, second, the two strands are anti-parallel to each other, so the orientation of the two strands is opposite to each other. The sequence of the second strand can be derived from the first strand using base complementarity rule of A pairing with T and G pairing with C. Right? Then another important thing is that genes could be there on either the plus strand or on the minus strand. So genes are not limited to the top strand or the bottom strand. They could be present either on the top strand or on the bottom strand. Right? So when they're present on the top strand, you're directly retrieving the sequence. There is nothing that you need to do. However, the, when they're present on the minus strand, then you know, one, you have to complement. Second, you have to read it from the opposite end. So therefore, it is known as the reverse complement, right? Then, of course, uh, the database contains only the tops or the plus strand and the annotation coordinates example, gene location is given with reference to the plus strand. So your annotation coordinates or your, let's say, gene location is given with respect to the top strand. And it is mentioned whether the gene is present on the plus strand or the minus strand. If it is in the plus strand, you can directly retrieve the sequence. But if it is on the minus strand, then in that case, you'll have to uh, do a complement and read it in the reverse direction. That is what gives you the reverse complement. So if the gene is on the minus strand, then the sequence is complemented and read from the opposite direction. Since the gene starts from the five prime end and ends at the three prime end. So let's now look at the idea of reverse complement in the context of a gene, right? So here I show you the plus strand, and on the plus strand you have a gene at coordinates 500 to 1100. And this gene has supposedly two introns and three exons marked as E1, E2, and E3. Upstream to the uh, five prime end of the gene, you have the promoter, and to the three prime end of the gene, you have the termination sequence. So because the gene is on the plus strand, you can directly retrieve the sequence of the gene. So let's now look at how the gene would behave if it was on the minus strand. So here you are, this is the same gene hypothetically on the minus strand, and you can very clearly see it, is, it has the same coordinates, 500 to 1100. However, the orientation of the gene has changed now, and the order of exons is also reversed. So because the database only contains the sequence of the top strand or the plus strand, you need to do a reverse complement to get the actual gene sequence in case the gene is found on the minus strand, right? 
And what we'll do is we'll go to the UCC genome browser and check a gene on the plaza strand. An example would be GAPDH and a gene on the manager strand. An example would be SRM or spermidine synthase gene, right? But before doing that, let's do a simple question here. So here is a question, and uh, this is to test whether you understood the concept or not. What is the reverse complement of 5 prime GAA TTC, 3 prime? Uh, one thing that we need to remember is even if the 5 prime and 3 prime is not mentioned here, it is understood that the left end of a sequence represents the 5 prime end and the right end of the sequence represents the 3 prime end of the sequence, right? So by default, if you do not mention 5 prime and 3 prime, uh, it is taken for granted that the uh, first nucleotide represents the 5 prime end and the last nucleotide represents the 3 prime end in the sequence, right? So the question is, what is the reverse complement of 5 prime GAA TTC, right? So the first thing that you can do is to simply derive the complement of the sequence. So using the base complementarity rule, we'll first find out what is the complement sequence here. So G complements to C, A complements to T, T again, T complements to A, A again, and then you have a G complementing to C on the top. We also know that the a minus a strand would have an opposite orientation to the plus a strand. So we now mark the five prime and three prime end. So you have the five prime end here and the three prime end here, right? So then what is the reverse complement? It is a complementary sequence written in five prime to three prime orientation. So, right? so in this case, the reverse complement would become, we'll take this sequence and write it from five prime to three prime end, right? So you have G, A, A, T, T, C. So this is our final reverse complement here, right? GAA TTC. And if you have noticed, this is the same as your original sequence that was given to you. So such a sequence where the reverse complement is the same sequence of nucleotides as the original sequence uh, is known as a palindrome, right? And palindromes are a common feature of any restriction line recognition sequences. So here you are, palindrome, the reverse complement of the sequence is the same as the original sequence. Uh, recognition sequences of many restriction enzymes are palindromic in nature. Right? So let me now take you to a live demo of uh, uh, a gene on the plus strand and also a gene on the minus strand. So we go to GAPDH, which is on the plus strand, and then we go back to SRM, which is on the minus strand. This is your UCC genome browser. The URL is given here. You could also go through Google and finally get to the main page here. So here you are, it is asking you to navigate into the closest mirror site. So that would be our Asia site. So we'll go to the Asia site here, right? And this brings us now to the main uh, genome browser gateway. So in the genome browser gateway, the latest uh, version of human genome assembly that is available is loaded by default. So this is your December 2013 GRCH38 or HG38 assembly that is given here. So our job now is to look at the uh, gene GAPDH. Let me now take you to the GAPDH gene here. So this is a position of search term. I'll type the name of the gene. It will prompt me all entries that match to the GAPDH gene sequence partly or completely. I take the first entry, which is my GAPDH gene here. So I click on this. And after clicking on this, if you see, the chromosomal position of my sequence is indicated here. This is Chromosome 12, 6534, 517, 2, 3738, 371, right? And I click on go and it takes me finally to the annotation page where it will show my gene in the context of uh, the entire chromosome, right? So here you are, if you see, this is a chromosome 12 and this is the region where my gene is. The red line indicates the actual location of the gene uh, on the entire chromosome here, right? So very clearly you can see that this is on the short arm of the chromosome 12. It is closer to the telomere as compared to the centromere. And here is your gap DH isoforms. These represent your exons. So if you see, this is exon 1 of 9. Then you come to this one. This is exon 2 of 9, 3 of 9, 4 of 9. And this is the final exon. This is exon 9 of 9, right? And there are small variations in the various other forms that are found in the human genome. And one way of finding out whether the gene is on the plus strand or the minus strand is to look at these arrows in the intronic regions. If the arrows in the intronic regions mark to a right, then it is indicative that the gene is on the plus strand. If 
the uh, arrows point towards left, then it is indicated that the gene is on the minor strand. So here in this case, the gate gene is on the plus strand. So therefore, you can directly pull down the sequence of gap gauge from here. So you go to view, you go to DNA. So in the get DNA window, you will first have your position, which is the exact position of the gap gate gene. If you want to retrieve extra sequences here, you can mention how many bases do you want extra the five prime end, or how many bases do you want extra the three prime end. And then of course there are sequence formatting options. So generally uh, what we do is by default, we take take all uppercase and then we mask repeats and mask repeats can be done to lowercase or to N, which means that any nucleotide corresponding to a repeat sequence will be substituted by a capital N. And whatever downstream software you use for your analysis, that would not, uh, that would identify that there is a nucleotide here, but it would be blind to the nucleotide. And therefore this region will not be used for any downstream analysis. For example, let's say primary designing, right? And and finally, you have an option for reverse complement, but because our gene is on the plus strand, we do not need to do a reverse complement. So I'll directly say get DNA here. It will get us the DNA for gap DNA gene in the human genome, right? This on chromosome 12, coordinate X to coordinate Y. Uh, we have not allowed any extra sequence to be uh, pulled out from the five prime end. So this is zero padding. This is also zero padding. And then we are uh, we have chosen the option of repeat masking and we have said whatever nucleotide is a repeat, it should be converted to capital N, right? So this is how you get the sequence for a gene on the plus strand. Now let's try another gene that is on the minus strand and I know it. So we'll go back to the uh, home page and we start from here. So we go to genome browser again and then I say SRM. Right, and if you see here, this is permidine synthase gene. It is found on chromosome one. Now I click on go again. So if you look at the broader context in terms of the ideogram here, our gene is found towards the telomere on the P arm of chromosome one. Right? Then if you see here, this is the representation of the gene. And if you see, this is the eight of the eight exons. So this is the last exon here, and the first exon is found here. Right? This is the first exon here, if you can see. And if you see now the, the arrows on the introns, they are pointing towards left. So this pointing towards left means that, uh, that the gene is on the minus strand. So now let's see how you retrieve the sequence of this gene. So you go to view, you go to DNA. We are not adding any extra sequence here, but now coming back here, we are pulling the sequence in all uppercase. We are doing repeat masking so that we clearly know uh, where our repeats are present. If you want to, if you want to look at the sequence of the repeats, you could do uh, masking to the lower case. In which case, uh, nucleotides corresponding to repeats will come in lower case. All other sequence will come in upper case. And because our gene is on the manager strand, we must necessarily do reverse complement. So we do the reverse complement here, and we say get DNA. So here is your sequence, and if you see here, this is in the first of file, you have a little sign, you have a small annotation of what the sequence was about. And then from the second line onwards, you have the entire sequence, right? So on that note, class, I hope you have understood the difference between complement and reverse complement. I'll see you again with more interesting lectures. Uh, in the meantime, you can subscribe to my channel uh, and also in case you have any, any doubts, you can write it in the comment section below. Thank you very much.